Peter Meese, you are a director and co-founder of Radtac Limited, which is a platinum sponsor at this year's Agile Business Conference, where you'll be giving a keynote presentation together with Stephen Grafton of Capita Children's Services. Now, this is an enterprise that you recently helped to transform their entire delivery organisation using Agile approaches. You say that you experienced significant successes, but also learned a lot of lessons during the transformation, some of which were painful. Can you give us some examples from both perspectives? Yep, hi Mary, thanks for the opportunity to have a chat about what we're going to be talking about at the uh, conference. Uh, success and pain, I think any transformation that we do has uh, significant elements of this. Thinking specifically about the uh, uh, capita transformation, which was fantastic. Uh, I think the main successes we had was basically no great surprise when people first start doing a transformation to anything, but certainly Agile. They can be very sceptical about it, and there can also be very serious concern in the organisation about um, you know, what's going to happen to my job, basically, and what's going to happen to the organisation, are we going to increase the productivity, why are we spending the money on doing this change, all that sort of good stuff. And um, The biggest success that we've had with Capita Agile, uh, Capita Children's Services is that uh, it's now part of the culture, it's now the way of working. Um, we started there with Capita Guys in around January. Uh, it's now uh, towards the end of June, uh, July, and it would be very difficult for Capita to fall back to a waterfall way of working now because Agile has become so ingrained. So starting from a point of uh, great concern, scepticism, moving to a point of Agile becoming ingrained with the inherent uh, benefits in productivity, quality and all that sort of good stuff. Um, I suppose really been the two key things. The key learning point, as always from transformations, is that when thinking about Agile, it's about a combination of different approaches generally or pragmatic Agile that works. And in this particular scenario, we've put in place a combination of DSDM and Scrum. Uh, DSDM for more the project management sort of layers, Scrum for more the delivery layers, uh, also Kanban for the more uh, bug management type stuff, so a combination of things. And it's also the understanding of how to transform organisations. It's not just a case of going in there and saying, right, here's perfect agile, do it that way. It's about working with human beings to help them transform and get it as the standard way of working. Mm -hmm. So quite a verbose answer, but uh, <laughs> that's that one, yeah. Okay. At the corporate level, from a strategic perspective, what would you say is the main benefit of adopting an agile way of working? Uh, yeah, good question again. Um, in my experience, um, and I've been sort of working in Agile since around 94 and the large transformations, etc. But strategically, when you ask people what are the key things that concern you about information technology delivery, customers or IT people, they generally always come out with the same three answers. And that is, you know, we're concerned about IT because it delivers late, we're concerned about IT because it delivers over budget, and we're concerned about IT because it delivers the wrong, uh, delivers the wrong product. So um, all Agile approaches, DSGM, Scrum, XP, all of the good stuff, Lean, Kanban, all that sort of, sort of stuff, uh, they all focus in on answering those three key questions. If you're doing Agile properly, so you're doing Agile and not Fragile, then you will be experiencing delivery of the right product on day of delivery, and that product may well be different from the product which you originally, uh, you originally thought about three or six months ago, and you will be delivering on time and you will be delivering on cost. So strategically, that's a real biggie. The other real biggie, um, if you start to come into the world of enterprise agile, so the sort of thing that RadTech do with large worldwide organisations, so this is rolling agile out across hundreds and thousands of people on a worldwide basis, um, you have alignment. So you have alignment from the strategy at the highest level in the organisation, uh, right to the delivery teams, seven plus align is two people, six to twelve people, whatever it is. But you've got total alignment across what strategic products we want and what strategic products we're actually getting. And that is absolute gold dust. So delivering the right products that's all strategically aligned. And Agile really enables that very, very well. Mm -hmm. The Agile Transformation Programme comprised a number of projects. How would you describe the role of the Agile Project Manager and how does it differ from the traditional role? Um, Agile Project Management, this is a real sort of hot potato in the Agile world. Um, some people get very, very polarised on this and insist that you do not have project managers or you do have project managers or whatever. It re in my experience, it really depends what you're doing. Certain organisations deliver in a project way, therefore you must have the project governance around it, therefore you need Agile project managers. Some organisations deliver in a product way, so in other words, they're delivering business as usual in more of a product release train, then they don't have the project governance in place. Um, so it really depends what you're doing. 
in the vast majority of organisations which we work with, you need project managers. Would those project managers be in the delivery teams? No, it wouldn't. Uh, so for Scrum, for example, you know, we don't see the role of a project manager in the delivery team. In DSDM, we don't see the role of a project manager in the delivery team. In XP, we don't, etc., etc., etc. But does that preclude the need for project managers? No, it doesn't. We do need project managers and agile deliveries where we're delivering projects. Uh, and that's absolutely fundamental. People get very, very polarised and upset about this particular question. Um, there is no definitive answer. It depends what we're doing. But if you have a need to do projects and deliver business cases, you need Agile project managers. Right. Do you think Agile is here to stay? I think Agile is now, certainly in the information technology world, um, the de facto standard. Um, the Standish Group, for example, I'm not, I'm not the greatest lover of statistics, but the Standish Group, for example, um, you know, who have got no real axe to grind in Agile or whatever. They said last year, 2010, in their opinion, 80% of the IT world would be Agile by 2012. Personally, I don't believe that. Um, I think, personally, 80% uh, of the information technology world may be fragile. So, you know, as they think they're using Agile, but they're just using elements of it. You know, they haven't got the robustness, for example, that DSGM would provide or Scrum or whatever. Um, the IT world is definitely going down the agile, the agile route, though. You know, the understanding is there now that the sorts of things that we do with information technology are generally inherently volatile, and it's because of that inherent volatility, you need to be using uh, an agile approach. So, is it here to stay? Absolutely, definitely, in the information technology world, um, it is near as damn the de facto standard now. Um, Asia is hugely changing to Agile at the moment. I'm spending a lot of my time doing training consultancy um, uh, India and China in recent years. So you know, that market is changing hugely. The States has largely changed to Agile. Europe is in the process of changing to Agile. So yeah, Agile will also become a hell of a lot more prevalent in non-information technology areas. Uh, RadTech do a lot of work with organizations not related to information technology using Agile approaches to deliver products, etc. So yeah, it's definitely here to stay. Thank you very much, Pete. My pleasure.